So now we know the three goals of the opening. Control the center, develop your knights and bishops, and get your king castled. Today, we're going to focus on development. At the beginning of the game, it's all about getting your friends to the party. Let's see how this might work out well for one side, not so well for the other. Both sides are putting their pawn in the center. That's solid Grandmaster strategy. On the next turn, though, if white gets a little too excited about attacking the center, white might make this move pawn to d4, which surprisingly is a mistake. Let me show you why. When black captures that pawn, the only way for white to capture back is with a queen. It's commonly said at the beginning of the game that it's dangerous to bring your queen out. It's like putting your general in front of your army. Bringing your best piece out early means if she gets attacked, she's going to have to waste time running all around the board. Or worse, she may even get captured. Okay, how does black bring a piece off the back row to attack the queen? Well, I wasn't looking for pawn to c5. That's not bringing a piece off the back row. Instead, I much prefer the move knight to c6. The way a chess player talks, we would say that black has gained a tempo. Tempo is just a fancy word for time, and you're going to learn a lot of foreign sounding words when you learn chess. Okay, white would like to get a new piece off the back row. The problem is, of course, that his queen is hanging. She's about to be captured. Now, the worst case scenario would be to put your queen on a square like c3. We're going to learn all about tactics and tricks in the next couple of videos, but for now, I'm just going to show you this move bishop to b4, and the queen is already lost on the fourth move of the game. If she captures, the knight is there for backup. The knight will just come in and take. And if she tries to run away, well, my machine won't even let me do that. Because when I put my queen here, the white king will suddenly be in check. And you can't put yourself in check. When I try to let go, the computer doesn't even let me make that move. Let's go back. Probably the queen should just run back home. Instead, let's see what happens if she tries to be a one-person army. If she plays queen to d5, we're going to do it again. We're going to bring a new piece out and attack the queen. Okay, now she has to move again. If she continues to fight this battle on her own, now we've got this bishop up here on the same diagonal. If we move one of our pawns, we will open up an attack. Pawn to d5. This type of idea also has a special name, which we will get to in one of the upcoming videos. Okay, the queen has to move again. Let's move her back to the square, mm, I don't know, f4. Time for the bishops to have some fun. Yeah, we could capture this pawn here. I get that. But if our goal is to keep on getting our friends out, let's bring our bishop to the square d6. Bishop to d6, and look at all of these tempos that we're winning. Let's take a little pause. Who's doing a better job of getting pieces off the back row? Hmm. Well, clearly it's black. Black has one, two, three. White only has one. And although white would like to get a new piece out, he can't because he has to move his queen yet again. Let's have the queen move to the square F3. Okay, now she's on a white square. I think you guess what's coming next. We're going to use our light squared bishop to come all the way out and attack the queen. Again, the queen can't capture the bishop because this knight's there for backup. That would be really silly to give away your queen like this. So let's move the queen one more time. Queen to e3. Let's slide her over one square. It would not be bad to go ahead and capture this pawn. I get that. But remember, one of the other goals of the opening, besides developing and aiming at the center, is getting your king castled. I think now would be a perfect time to do that. If black castles, remember that means the king moves one, two, and the rook jumps over. Let's go ahead and make that move. Not only does black's king get safe, but one of the hidden benefits of castling is that your rook is going to jump into the game really quickly. Now white finally has a free move. I would greatly encourage white to get one of these knights or bishops off the back row. But in this game, we're just assuming that white has not watched my videos and instead plays a move like, hmm, maybe pawn captures pawn. That's a little too greedy. Now we're going to attack that queen one final time. This file right here, the E file, is a perfect place to put our rook. And when our rook slides over, I think the queen is a goner. If she tries to run away, then white's king is in check. And again, that is not allowed. I don't see any way to prevent the rook from capturing the queen. Look at this beautiful final position. 
All of Black's knights and bishops are off the back row. His king is perfectly safe behind this wall of pawns. He even got his rook in the game. All White's pieces could do was watch and see the lady go bye-bye. Don't play like White did in this game, chess kids. Get all your friends out, get your king castled, and you'll be a master in no time.